friends. We're friends, right? I'm still a little ashamed to admit this, but when I was in 10th grade, I wasn't just like a regular dork or a dweeb. I was a special kind of loser. I was a chess nerd. You see, me and my friends would hide our pimply faces from the cool kids on the quad and play not just regular chess, but variations like absorption chess and checklist chess and our favorite reverse chess. <laughs> Problem was, I wasn't very good at chess. It, it, frankly, I saw myself as more Zach Morris than Boris Spassky, and I realized that if I didn't do something soon, I was gonna spend the rest of high school as a complete social outcast. One day, dejected by yet another anti-checkmate, I decided to apply to the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. Now, well, yeah. <laughs> NCSSM is a public boarding school that was set up by the state, basically for gifted kids who had surpassed their local school's curriculum. But for me, science and math offered a golden opportunity. What better way, I figured, to up my social standing than to surround myself with even bigger dorks? I arrive in the fall of my junior year, and I realize that I have a chance at social redemption when the first thing I see is a huge banner that says, welcome, class of 1996, unicorns. Yeah, yes, unicorns. Clearly with the school mascot nicknamed the Uni, we were all gonna have to check our egos at the door. Now my reinvention started with my name. My given name, Nooper, which several elementary school bullies had previously recognized, rhymes not only with pooper, but scooper, <laughs> was, sim was simply not gonna help me break out from my nerd persona. So from then on, I would go up to people I hadn't yet met and say, hi, my name is Noop, like Snoop Doggy Dog. <laughs> Without the S or the Doggy Dog. One of the first people I meet is Hao Chang, a six foot two math whiz and son of immigrants from Statesville. Hao comes up to me during orientation and he's like, hi, I'm Hao, and how do you do? <laughs> the first thing I think of is, man, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, th there can't be two people with awesome introductions. Uh, I I'm gonna have to find a way to avoid this guy. Pretty soon, one of the other juniors comes up to me later on in the year and is like, um, hey, Noop, there's like this um, hot pepper eating contest and like, you should probably join. Hot pepper eating contest. This is it. This is my chance to show the rest of the school that I am a force to be reckoned with. I mean, after all, we are in the South where I'm pretty sure that the main spice is bacon. I'm definitely the only person to smuggle in their own Tabasco and my mom, had famously once brought samosas instead of orange slices to a soccer practice. I, I mean, I was basically raised to win this tournament. The day of the tournament arrives, and in classic science and math fashion, the rules are aggressively scientific. Each of the seven rounds were gonna be in escalating Scoville units, which I'm sure you all know, Scoville units are the unit of measurement for spiciness. Water was allowed, but no milk and no bread. I take a look at the other contestants and, lo and behold, Hao Chang. He comes up to me with his, how do you not <laughs> Noop like Snoop, uh, we've met. <laughs> Round one begins and it's pepperoncini. What a joke. <laughs> Less than a thousand Scovilles. Interestingly, two people drop out right away. Round two, poblano pepper. Round three, pickled jalapeno pepper. Round four, a raw jalapeno pepper at 5,000 Scovilles. Bang, bang, bang. After each round, people drop out because they can't handle the heat. My mouth is burning, but I'm feeling pretty confident. I look over at how, looks cool as a cucumber. <laughs> round five, serrano pepper at 20,000 Scoville units. Raw Serranos are so hot that all but four people drop out. Round six, and it's a doozy. 
Dave's Insanity Hot Sauce, which at the time was billed as the world's hottest hot sauce and is rated at 100,000 Scovilles or 20 times a raw habanero. I, uh, I take three drops into my mouth and my tongue lights on fire. My head starts sweating, my eyes water. When I blink through my tears, I can see that there are just two people left, me and Hao Chang. <laughs> By now, we've drawn a bit of a crowd, and I just think to myself, if I can just win this tournament, I'm sure I'll probably find the love of my life, and, and, and Princeton <laughs> will probably offer me some sort of hardship scholarship. <laughs> but, but, but first, I have to get past my new nerd nemesis, Hao fucking Chow. Chang. His name is Chang. Sorry. <laughs> you know, the, it's sort of like an epic battle. You know, China versus India. The dragon versus the elephant. Mala versus Masala. Yao Ming versus... You, well, you know, a famous Indian athlete. <laughs> it, it all comes down to round seven. Eat as many raw habanero peppers as you can at 200,000 Scoville units. I get the first one in my mouth. I chew it up and I manage to get it down despite the searing pain in my chest. It's around now that the cumulative spice content has sort of created a hallucinatory effect. <laughs> and I imagine a, a rainbow unicorn dancing through a, a field of saltines and popsicles with overflowing fountains of Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> I, I lean in to make out with the unicorn when I hear the final bell. It's over. I had eaten three. How had eaten five. I know. <laughs> the audience filters out, and Hao leaves in what I can only recall as the embrace of several beautiful women. I eat a piece of bread alone and head back to the dorm, dejected that somehow my dreams of coolness have slipped through my fingers. It's around 2 a.m. that it hits me, a deep gnawing sensation in the pit of my stomach radiating to my belly button. It feels like the habaneros are trying to get out, but I, I won't let them. I writhe around in pain all night, and it continues into the next day, so much so that I have to skip class. You might ask yourself, uh, you know, is there anything worse than losing the tournament, having severe abdominal pain, and letting down the homeland? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, folks, there is. You see, I found out that that night, Howe had been taken to the emergency room where he was kept overnight and had his stomach pumped. <laughs> d d did I feel sorry for him? No. <laughs> no. Because if you consider the fact that I had to suffer those Scoville units in their entirety, and I mean in their entirety, I think I should be considered the winner. How do you like that?